Ça y est, la nouvelle est répandue. Mon jour est arrivé. Le jour de mon départ est celui de Mélier. Vers le pays dont tout le monde parle. Tout le monde rêve. Alors je vois ma vie passer devant les yeux. Et j'entends encore la voix de mes aïeux qui m'accompagne là où je vais. Puis je me souviens encore de la l'air, les odeurs de l'été coin, le monde de hell, le regard à la fond pli de frime et de joie. Je les entends encore, c'est bon, je vais venir Traversava mares e fronteiras Um dia tornarei a minha terra Que o calor da minha madre me espera
Hi, everyone. Welcome uh, to Tradition Kitchen's Biscocho's class with Sarah. We're so excited uh, to have you all with us here today. Um, so Tradition Kitchen's is a relatively new organization. We're just about a year old, um, and we're all about sharing stories through food and cooking. And so our Zoom cooking classes have been a hit this summer, uh, focusing on this idea of destination kitchen, of traveling the world through food. Um, so we're so excited to have you all here today. Um, so if we could ask you all to turn on your cameras, one of our favorite traditions is taking a Zoom selfie of all the participants here. Um, so I'll ask you all to turn on your cameras so Julia can go ahead and take some screenshots. Hi, everyone. Um, so we'd love for you to be on video. Part of our classes are about building community. So I'm just going to try to take a couple quick um, screenshots. So everyone smile uh, towards the camera. And then we might do this at the end as well if you're baking along with us so we can have beautiful pictures of your cookies. So everyone look at the camera. Three, two, one. Let's take two more. And again, we do love people to join us on video at builds community as part of our organization. So three, two, one, and one more. And if, let's see, Mira, can you answer Anita in the chat about not hearing us? Three, two, one. All right, I'm gonna turn it back to Mira. Thanks everybody. And we're gonna spotlight our wonderful teacher extraordinaire again. Um, yeah, so we're so excited to have Sarah with us here today. Sarah is an extremely talented musician and chef, um, and she's going to teach us about her family's biscocho recipe. Um, so I ask that if you have any questions, please send them in the chat, and I'll be reading through um, to ask Sarah questions throughout. Um, but we ask because we have a large group that you stay muted. Um, so thanks so much, and I'll hand it off to Sarah. Thank you everyone for joining me. What an amazing crowd. I am Sarah Arawesti, and some of you might know me as a Ladino singer uh, or performer, perhaps not so much as a chef, but I hope that I can impress you tonight with all of my skills. Um, first off, thank you Tradition Kitchens for hosting me tonight. This is a really wonderful opportunity to bring so many people together through food and culture. And Mira, thank you for moderating and for checking the chat as we go along because my hands will be deep in dough and it will be hard for me to answer everybody in the chat. Um, I just wanna start off by saying that uh, I really do not claim to be uh, an expert in biscochos, but I'm thrilled to be here to share one of my family recipes with you. It's one of my absolute favorites, and it ties into so much of the work that I do to help preserve Sephardic and specifically Ladino culture. Um, in so many ways, food and music go hand in hand, and I'm going to be explaining a little bit of why as we go along, but this is going to be a food experience and also a song one. So I do hope that you opened up the link to get your song sheets because while our beautiful bizcochos are cooking, we will have some time to sing together. So I really hope that you'll join me. And so please do uh, download or print out those song sheets while we're waiting. So today we are making the very famous Sephardic Biscocho. And I went ahead and I made a batch this morning. And I hope you can see these gorgeous cookies. In the next hour, you are going to be making these with me. And now I know that there is, uh, just like most things in Jewish culture, there are debates surrounding this special cookie. I am aware that people get very sensitive and protective of their own family recipes, um, as well as the name and how to even spell this delightful cookie. We are not here to debate this. We are here to cook and to have fun and to sing. But before we get started, I do want to give just a little bit of history for the many of you who have asked. So I am going to uh, share my screen right now. So give me just one minute while I load it. Okay, 
So how did this cookie get its name? Well, my family does not even call it a bizcocho. So you say bizcocho, but I say taralico or taraliku, or truly what my family really says is taraliku. And this is why. So this name was particularly common in the Western Balkans because it comes from the Italian word for cookie, for a specific type of cookie that looks just like this called the tarali, the tarali. And eco, eco, I bolded the I-K-O is the diminutive form in Judeo-Spanish in Ladino for little. So literally, this is a little tarali, a taralico. Now, we often combined our D's and our R's. So even though some people spell it taralico, it almost sounds like a D in the front of your mouth. So that's why it became the taralico for those of us from Macedonia and from the Western Balkans. Yay, Macedonia, shout out. Okay, now some of you not from the Western Balkans, uh, in Salonika, you might be familiar with roscas, rosquitas, or you can spell it with a K, rosquitas, and that literally means little rings. A rosca is a ring, a little ring. In Izmir and throughout Turkey, you might call it reshas or reshikas, little ropes. Literally, a resha is a rope, so these are little ropes. Other names include ka'ak, which is common for many Mizrahi and Middle Eastern Jews. Kulrakia, which is common for Romaniot, those are the indigenous Greek Jews. Um, also in Spain and in Cuba, you might call them rosquias or rosquitas. So you can see there are several different names, but ultimately, they have many of the same ingredients and most of them share somewhat of a similar shape, but I will talk about some differences in a minute. So back to the bizcocho. Not to be confused with the bizcocho, which has a Z in it, because that actually refers to a cake. But bizcocho, the literal meaning is like biscotti, which means twice baked. That is actually what it means, twice baked. You'll see in my recipe, for those of you who studied it, we are not twice baking this cookie. Um, instead, we are only going to do it in a single bake, but I do know some people who do a twice bake to get it extra crispy, but I've never done it that way, nor has my family. So that is one reason why we don't call it a bizcocho, because it is not twice baked, and that's why we call it a tadliku. But today, bizcocho has become the catch-all word for whatever we call this delicious cookie. So no matter what you call it, I think we can all agree that it is beautiful and delicious and they are very similar across the board. Now there are some difference in flavors and shape. Some people do put a splash of alcohol in it um, that can range from some whiskey. I have a cousin who you'll meet in a second uh, who does use some whiskey. Um, others use wine, cognac, or even anise, anything licorice flavored like ouzo. Um, I do know some people who forgo the egg wash in my recipe and don't use sesame seeds for whatever reason and instead use cinnamon or powdered sugar or even both, cinnamon sugar. Um, some use vanilla, some not. My recipe does have vanilla. Some use orange juice, mine does not. Um, some roll the end, uh, the cookie at the end in chopped walnuts, um, which is not for me, but could be for you. Um, and then the shape can also be different. Um, some people do the round cookie with the scoring, which is what you see here, and this is what I like to do. Some don't do the scoring. Um, some are round with ropes. Um, I do not do that. Um, and some are more in a pretzel shape. Again, that is not my recipe. It might be yours, and I would love for you to share your recipes with me afterwards. But I'm going to teach you the traditional tadliku or bizcocho recipe that was passed down for many, many generations in my family. I'm sure your recipe is great too, but I'm gonna share the special recipe that I have known and loved my whole life. There are, however, two things that no matter what, always stay the same. This cookie has oil, not butter. 
the taliku, the biscotto, the resha, anything you want to call it, it is an oil-based cookie. There is no butter. Why? If you think about it, there are very few cookies and baked goods that have no butter. It's because the Sephardim were, for the most part, they carried on orthodox tradition and kashrut rules, the rules of being kosher. And so they didn't want to use butter in their recipes so that they could eat them all day long and it was kosher to eat. So that is the first thing that across the board is the same for all of these cookies. And the second thing, and it's why we are here, these cookies are baked with heart. They are made with heart and they have been passed down from generation to generation. And so these cookies really truly are made with love. And where did I learn this cookie? This is my family all the way on the right. The gentleman on the right with the nice big smile on the bottom row is my grandfather. He was the oldest of nine brothers and sisters from Macedonia. And the three beautiful women in the middle, my three great aunts, Aunt Esther, Aunt Anne, and Aunt Helen, they were the masters of this art. And I kid you not, there was not one holiday or occasion for my family where this cookie was not made with those three beautiful women elbowing each other in the kitchen, fighting for space to make these tadlikus. We had them on Thanksgiving, we had them on Shabbat, we had them on Rosh Hashanah, we had them at momentous birthdays. This is the, the one food I remember most clearly growing up and it was made with so much love. Now, I wanna just say a quick word about where my recipe comes from. The little boy on the right is my grandfather. This picture was taken around 1910, 1911 in what is today Macedonia. Back then it was Upper Greece, Lower Yugoslavia, and this picture was taken in Monastir, which you're gonna be hearing about a little bit throughout this presentation. Monastir, which is now known as Bitola in North Macedonia. And my grandfather was born there and Ladino, some people call it Judeo-Spanish, was his first language. And I love, love, love this language and the songs and the culture and the food. And I hope you can all see my, my t-shirt. Um, and so everything I've learned about this culture really was passed down from my grandfather. Now this other person that you see here, this is my very young sprightly cousin, cousin Rochelle. She is the only surviving member of my family who was born in Monastir. And this picture was taken in February, right before the outbreak of COVID. And um, in the picture, you see my two children, which who you'll meet in just a minute as well. But I just want to say that cousin Rochelle here is the person who uses the whiskey <laughs> in her biscotto recipe. So she has made it to 102. She'll be turning 103 in October. So she must be doing something right. Um, she really is a remarkable, remarkable person. Now, I am going to stop this uh, screen share so we can get to cooking because that's really what we are here to do. Um, you're going to hear more about uh, Rochelle, but I want just to pay a nod to my family. Uh, this is a cookie that you make with your family and you share song and cooking with so many people. And I have been potting the last few months with my extended family. So it is really a joy to be cooking with my own mother and my children. Uh, well, that's my nephew. <laughs> and um, I have a couple nephews here and the girl in the pink is my daughter. You wanna wave to everybody? Hi, so I have three generations here. So I'm really, really thrilled to be able to share this event with them as well. Okay, we are gonna get started. Now I hope that some of you will be cooking along with me. So I will try to go slowly so that you can follow the directions. Um, the first thing I want you to do is preheat your oven to 350 because that's gonna take a couple of minutes. Um, so go ahead and do that. I'll give you one, one second to do that. I've timed this event so that we can actually prepare and bake the cookie all together. Okay, so here we go. Get those recipes out. Sarah, someone's asking how much whiskey would you suggest adding and when? 
have to ask my cousin Rochelle, but um, you know, at least a shot, probably a shot. <laughs> okay, so again, this is what they're gonna look like when they're done, like this. And I'll bring these out as samples in a minute, but I'm gonna put those aside. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we are going to mix our dry ingredients. So I'm going to start with my flour. And the thing about the art of making bizcochos is that for those of us who have been doing it for quite some time, we can feel the texture. So even though the recipe calls for three cups of flour, um, I might adjust the egg a little bit at the end to see if it's really holding up the way that I want it to. But for now, I'm gonna use three cups of flour. And then I am going to put in my two teaspoons of baking powder. And I'm just gonna give that a quick stir. And then I'm going to put in my one cup of sugar. You just wanna mix it a little bit so it's nice and even. Okay, I'm gonna put that aside. And I'm gonna start putting my wet ingredients together. So I'm going to start with my eggs. Goodbye. I'm gonna give it just a quick, quick whisk. It doesn't have to look pretty. No comments from the peanut gallery over there. <laughs> okay. So then I am going to put in my salt. I'm gonna put in my oil. And I should point out that behind the camera is my lovely husband, Jeff, who happens to actually be a chef. So I can see him smirking a little bit. <laughs> so I do get some help sometimes, I'm not gonna lie. And I'm going to use my one teaspoon of vanilla. Okay. Now, this is the fun part. Sarah, someone's asking how much oil and salt and what kinds of oil? Oh, great question. So, uh, I am using vegetable oil today. Um, any, um, you can use canola oil. I know people who use, who, uh, who use canola oil. Once I didn't have uh, oil, and so I ended up using coconut oil, which was actually delicious. So any mild tasting oil I think is fine to use. Today I am using vegetable oil. Um, I also would say about the eggs. It depends if you're using fresh eggs or not. Um, fresh eggs tend to be a little bit bigger, and so um, you, the three eggs should be enough. If you're using older eggs, they might um, be a little bit smaller, in which case uh, you, we might need to add in a little bit, but I'll know that as we go along with the texture. Okay, so now we are going to combine our ingredients. Probably should have done this the other way around as my estimate's looking. <laughs> okay, so I really, the beginning, I'm going to go very slowly with the, the ingredients because I'm going to mix it as I go along. Some people do use a mixer. Um, I do not. Um, I'm going to start by using just a big wooden spoon and then I'm going to go to my hands. Because I like to really feel the dough and make sure that the ingredients are mixing exactly the way I want them to. Um, I also want to point out that I do have relatives who are um, also from Monastir, who are the descendants of those beautiful great aunts I showed you the pictures of. And so um, if some of them are watching, feel free to chime in, Cam High girls, <laughs> and any other family members. 
Okay, I can't see because I'm doing this at the same time. How many, how many out there are actually cooking? Mira, can you see if people are actually cooking? Yeah, there's a bunch of people cooking along. Okay, good. <laughs> My cousin, who really is an expert at this, just gave me some props. <laughs> Sarah in California. Okay, so it's gonna seem really, really crumbly at first, and that is okay. It is going to, the more you stir it, and soon I'm gonna get my hands in there and I'm gonna get nice and nice and dirty with my hands. I hope everybody washed their hands. Okay, so you can see it's definitely a little bit crumbly. I don't know if you can see that. Because there's a lot of flour and I probably could have done the flour a little bit slower. So it's gonna take a little bit to, to mix it. So now, when I get to about this point, I'm gonna put my hands in. And it's starting to loosen up. Now I do have one relative who actually makes the dough the day before and puts it in uh, the refrigerator because she thinks it's easier to work with the colder dough. I go back and forth. I've always made them the day of and I haven't had a problem but to each his own. I actually have some in my fridge right now. Maybe we could even do a test to see. But you can see right now, it's definitely coming together as a dough. But you really gotta squeeze. It takes some, takes some strength. How's everybody doing out there? Mm -hmm. So I have a funny story about one of the toppings. Apparently, I have cousins who when they were little thought that the tadliku, the biscocho, was too boring, which I never thought because I think they're the most delicious things ever, but they thought it was too boring. And so they asked their mom to mix them with sprinkles. <laughs> and you're gonna see in the last step, it's hard to get the sesame seeds on top of the cookies. They don't stick very easily. So imagine a whole tray, essentially full of sprinkles. And to this day, they only want them with sprinkles. <laughs> you could put sprinkles. That's not really what I do though. Okay, so now it's getting to be really nice. And you can see when you squeeze it, it really is looking like dough. Now I did use some older eggs, so, uh, so I might actually use a little bit more egg to loosen it up just a little bit more. Because you really feel, you know it by touch. And right now it's not so crumbly, but it could use a little bit, little bit more help. So I'm, I'm gonna use a little bit more. You can either put in a little bit more oil or a little bit more egg. Okay, how's the dough over there, everybody? Is anyone having problems with their dough? Wait. Dough is too sticky. One hmm, a little bit more flour. Okay, but this is a, almost the right consistency. It's really getting there, but it takes a while. And again, I'm not a fan of the mixer because I really do want to feel it because I know how to make these cookies by touch. So the mixer doesn't do it for me, but if it's too hard to mix it, because it really, you got to put your arm in there. And so someone all, else is saying too crumbly. Crumbly. Yeah, if it's too crumbly, put a little bit more oil or a little bit more egg. I have one cousin who likes to make it, especially with extra oil. And when she's rolling it out, she likes to feel the oil squeeze out a little bit, which I never did, but she does make great tzadliku. So I trust her on that. Marcia. Okay, so mine is really, really, really starting to come into its own. This is, this is how it should look after you've really kneaded it and squeezed it. Can you see that? It really does stick together and it's not so crumbly. Somebody just asked, have you ever used orange juice in the dough? I have not, but it's very common. Orange juice is very common. There are no other juices that people use that I'm aware of, but 
orange juice instead of vanilla is probably um, one of the main differences in recipes when it comes to liquid. Okay, so I think I'm ready. I'm not sure I'm gonna add anything in it. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do, are people still having trouble with their dough? Because we're gonna get started with the fun part now. Okay. So if people this wanna hold their dough up to their camera, if you need any advice, we can then spotlight you if you need any, uh, if you have any questions. So let us know and Sarah can consult. <laughs> yeah. Orange blossom is fine to use. Let's see, we're gonna look at Amy really quickly. Let's take a look. Amy, how's it going? Oh, oh, that's too wet, that's definitely too wet. So add in some more flour for sure. Yep, that's definitely too wet. All right, anybody else? Together, can you see? Let's this? see, Sarah Gould, looking great. Can you show us that dough one more time? Awesome, um, very good. Anyone else? Oh, let's look at Gail really quickly. This is so fun. You, thank you, everybody's being a good sport. All right, Gail. Great. Great. Looks good. All right. Okay. I'm gonna go back to Sarah. Thanks, Sarah. <laughs> okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give my family, the peanut gallery over here, a chance to have some fun. So I'm gonna split my dough because I don't wanna be the only one having fun here. Um, I'm gonna give you two globs over there. Okay, that's, let's document this. Okay, these are, these are novices. No one in this corner has ever made these before. And I just wanna point out my mom in the pink here, she's first generation American. It is her father who was born in Monastir, um, but sadly it was really not passed down to, to her. So this is kind of a, a treat for her, I hope, to, to make this. Okay, so here I am, I'm passing over the dough. Okay. Now, some people use a silpat mat uh, to roll out the dough. Um, I have used a wooden board. I've also just used my, my countertop. So today I'm just going to use my, my countertop. And I spread a little bit of flour down that's the flour over there. And again, I'm gonna feel it as I go along. So I might add some more as necessary. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just take one chunk. There's no science, there's no math here. I just take what looks like a nice chunk and I'm gonna put it down and I'm gonna roll it very gently with my hand very 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 gently back and forth you don't want to press too hard because then it's going to get flattened i want to keep it in a round shape and if it's too slippery you can add more dough you guys are doing great over there um and this is far too thick you want to get it to about um, some people say a, a pinky i think that is far too skinny i normally do my my middle or my my pointer finger and this is a little bit too dry actually my surface right now so it's not rolling exactly the way i want it to but you just got to keep on going got to be patient it's very forgiving okay and if it's not sticking together if it's too crumbly you can add a little bit more oil normally it rolls out very quickly but right now i might actually take out my wooden board so bear with me I'm gonna use my wooden board for just a little bit more tug. Okay, how are you guys doing over there? It's okay. <laughs> okay, you guys are doing great. So normally this part doesn't take so long, but with new dough. Okay. How's everybody doing over there? Can you see? So it's definitely stretching out. And this is why some people work with the dough that was kept over night, which I'm about to take out. Jeff, can you get that other dough for me, please? Oh, yes. 
Okay, because this add a little bit more flour. Yours is great, honey. I, we're all there's no perfection here. It's all made with love. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so this doesn't look so pretty yet, but bear with me. So my little one is six years old, and she almost has it. Okay, so once you get it to about, like I said, about your middle finger, and I can't see who's doing it with me, but it should be nice and round. Okay, and once you get it just about the thickness of either your index or your middle finger, what I do is I take a tiny little paring knife and I'm going to start at about 11 o'clock. And this is the hard part, and I want the camera to really, really see what I'm doing here. Okay, so I do score it. Not everybody scores it, but that's where you get the really beautiful, the beautiful shape here. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I am going to start and um, I'm going to face it at about 11 p.m. And I'm gonna start right at the end. And I normally do about 12 uh, scores, about like a quarter of an inch apart. So I don't know if you can see right up close. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And right after the twelfth, I cut it and I put the other part aside. And look what happens. It's a miracle. It goes all the way around. And that's where you get that beautiful shape. Oh, you Someone's guys asking if we can zoom in a little bit more. Yeah. And after you score it and you pinch the sides together, and don't worry about how it looks exactly. Do you see that? Because it puffs up when it bakes. Oh, I don't think they can see it exactly. Oops, there you go, there you go. Um, it's going to even out as it bakes. Can you see that everybody? Okay, it's crumbling when you roll. Add more liquid, add a little bit more egg or a little bit more oil. Okay, so I'm gonna put this one aside. I don't touch it, yes. And then I'm gonna take the next part of the, uh, the dough that I was working on. And normally I can get about three cookies in one, in one clump. Do you guys have a paring knife over there? Okay, good. And the scoring, you don't wanna go all the way through. You wanna go about like three, uh, three quarters or a half even. Okay, so now I'm gonna to go to the next part. You watching? I'm gonna start at about 11 o'clock. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12. And right after the 12th, I'm gonna cut it. Okay, look what's gonna happen. Woo! And then I just kind of gently squeeze the ends together. And then if you really want it to be beautiful, you can even score it once you've pinched it back together. And it's gonna even out when it bakes. Okay, see how that looks? So I'm gonna put that one aside. Okay, and then yeah, I'll have exactly three in this clump. So here we go, ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. I just have a little bit extra there. I'll just pinch that off. Okay, ready? Woo! And then it just pinches together at the end. And like I said, if you really want it to look even, you can score it again once you've pinched it together. And then I'm gonna put that one aside and it's all going to um, be even. It's gonna even out when it, when, it, when it puffs out. And I've actually, somebody, uh, once asked why you score it because you really don't need to and I know plenty of people who don't what's the point of, of the scoring 
It's that it allows the rings to cook evenly without puffing up too much. I'm not a sewer, but apparently it's the same concept in the sewing that you put notches in your sewing to allow for flexibility. Apparently it's the same in biscotto cookies. Now, uh, how's everybody doing? I'm, I haven't been following the chat. Do we place, yes, we will do the parchment eventually, um, but we're not quite there yet. Uh, how are you guys doing? Okay, good. So I'm going to do one more roll so everybody can follow along. This is the dough that I made earlier today and you can see it actually does roll out more smoothly. Um, I go back and forth. Sometimes it's nice to have the chilled dough and you can see this one is rolling really, really, really quickly without any problems, but it was the exact same recipe. But sometimes I don't wait uh, wait for it to cool. In fact, this whole batch I did was 15 minutes before I put these in the oven. So it really depends. Okay, so I'm just going to make a couple more. Now, one whole batch makes like 60, over 60 cookies. So we are not going to spend all evening doing that uh, <laughs> because I want to actually get these in the oven in the next couple of minutes. So um, you can see Jeff, do you want to come closer? This is like the perfect width. Okay, so this is just about a finger, a finger width. And then you can watch me as I score it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And right after the twelfth, I'm gonna cut it and then look, woo, just like that. Okay, and again, you can just score it again where you pinched it and it's gonna even out when it cooks. Okay, and then I go to the next part. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12. I'm gonna cut it right after. And then, whoop, there we go. We're gonna pinch it a little bit. Okay, and I'm gonna put one more score there and then this last piece and I just really feel it I just sort of know what's going to make three cookies in each of my clumps so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve perfect okay I'm going to pinch it add one more score I don't need to do that but I like to do that now those are perfect now uh, I'm going to get my tray ready. I hope all of your ovens are sufficiently heated. I do use parchment paper. Um, some people just use a greased pan. Um, either way is fine. Either way is fine. But the one thing I do, uh, I do do is I actually use a spatula to transfer my cookies from uh, where I was shaping them onto the sheet because they are very delicate and they can crumble or break in the transfer. So this just makes it so easy. I'm gonna just slide right off. And it's okay if they're not so pretty or if they pinch off, they're gonna cook and even out. Okay. And you know what? It tastes great no matter what they look like. But you can see this was the dough that I that I um, had in the refrigerator for a couple of hours, and this is the one that I just just made. Okay. Now the next step, and for now I'm only making a small batch. How are you guys? Do you want to join my uh, uh, my cookie uh, sheet? We're definitely not like. Uh, Picture, okay, they're not picture. You don't have to be picture perfect. <laughs> okay. Okay, well, you have your own tray there, and I'm just going to use uh, my tray for now. Um, somebody asked if there's a significance to the 12 cuts. No, absolutely not. I, I wish there were, but um, for me, it's really just the length of it. It just, I think it makes them perfectly sized and shaped biscocho. So, it's always worked for me. Um, I think my cousin uses nine to 11. Um, here's a spatula. And Sarah, someone's asking how long is the log? How long is the log? 
Yeah. Okay, great. Um, I wish I had a more scientific answer for me if I feel um, I take, like I take a, probably a handful of dough and when I roll it out, um, uh, even less than that, I'd say. Um, like a, a nice healthy handful, can you see that? And then when I roll it out, it's about the size of a racquetball. A racquetball? That was about a racquetball size. Okay. And this one, again, it's the newer dough, so it's going to crumble a little bit, and I just have to be a little bit slower, slower with it. But um, I'd say uh, this mat or this board is how, what, like a two, a foot and a half, 18 inches? Yeah, probably. Yeah, so I'd say about 18 inches because mm -hmm. I normally can make three, and if um, they're about five to six inches each. So the log is obviously longer, but each strip that I'm working on um, after the 12 cuts, it's about five to six inches, five, if I had to predict. So the next step is our egg wash. And I do use the egg wash because I do make mine with sesame seeds. Uh, you can forgo the egg wash if you just wanna use cinnamon and sugar or any other topping like sprinkles. Um, but I know some people are allergic to sesame seeds, so you don't need to use any egg wash in that case. Um, I do think the egg wash makes it look pretty and I think it just tastes extra yummy too. So I am going to go ahead and use it. And uh, you really wanna try your best to, uh, to get it right on so to help the sesame seeds stick. And because this is a cooking class and I'm going pretty quickly, um, you can see there are only six cookies here. Um, like I said, I normally fill up at least, at least two trays. Um, these really do make like 60 cookies in each batch. Okay, and if it breaks a little bit, you just pinch it right back together. Okay, and now the sesame seeds. And it is hard to get the sesame seeds on top. So a lot of the sesame seeds will not end up on the biscocho, and that's okay. It's just the flavor and the taste and the texture. And I normally don't do this by hand. I do have a shaker, so it does move quickly. And you know, obviously I was teaching, so my cookies, I was shaping them a little bit slower than normal. Um, I made that dozen that I showed you, this sample, from start to finish, I probably made these in 10 minutes, um, and then I baked them for 18, but they can go very quickly once you get, once you get used to it. Okay, so again, don't worry if you're, the shape isn't perfect right now. When they bake, they will miraculously look gorgeous. Okay, any questions before we put these in the oven? Is that um, just- Someone's the asking if the egg wash is just the yolk. Oh. Uh, no, it's the whole, I used the whole egg. Yep. Okay. Does anybody want me to, to see their creations before we put them in the oven? Yes, cinnamon sugar before putting it in the oven. Correct. Uh, I guess you could do it after. I know some people have done powdered sugar after, but um, I think it's nice to bake it right in. Okay, here we go. So I'm going to put mine in. And I'm going to set my timer for 18 minutes. Now, I do check it after 15 just to make sure. You show what yours look like. The next generation. Um, okay, so for 18 minutes, uh, depending on your oven, I'm not using a convention oven. I'm using just a regular, regular oven. And... Um, 18 has always been the magic number for me. And uh, I do check it though, just to make sure. I just want it to be a, a nice light golden brown. If you want it crispier, you can keep it in longer, but 18 is perfect for me. So we have 18 minutes now. I'm gonna rinse off my hands, excuse me for one second. And we are going to sing some songs because this food, 
was most often made as women were in the kitchen singing around tables and songs were often accompanied uh, by cooking. So there really is a connection in some part of culture with the food and the music. And I could keep on doing these, but I do want to give you the attention for, uh, for the music. Um, like I said, some of you might know me as a singer. That is what I do when I'm not making tadlikus and bizcochos. I'm a professional singer of Ladino music. And I just would love to share some songs with you. So I do want to ask, for whom is this the very first time you were ever making bizcochos? Raise your hand if this is the first time. Okay, the peanut gallery over here included. <laughs> okay, great. So the first song I want to start with is called A La Una. A La Una. Which literally means in the beginning, at one, I was born. So this is for you. You new, you're you newbies out there. You were born today making the bizcochos. <laughs> and um, what is wonderful about Ladino music is that so many of the songs are very easily uh, repeatable. That's how the oral tradition has survived for so long because the songs had to be easy enough to remember from, ge from one generation to the next. Uh, so each line here repeats. And this is not a song workshop. I wanna be clear, I do offer those. And some of you I think who are on the call right now um, have participated in my song workshop. So I do offer classes that take deep dives into this music. But right now I just wanna sing with you. Um, so I'm not gonna take the time to explain the pronunciation and the background of these songs. I'm just gonna dive right in and sing. So just repeat after me for every line. And I wanna point out one thing about the lyrics, the chorus, alma, vida y corazón, soul, life, and heart. That is what we are putting in these cookies. That was what I was talking about. It's all about the heart. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to start this on a B. I'm going to try to pick a key that works for everybody. <clears throat> okay, just repeat after me. A la una yo nací, a las dos me engrandecí. Repeat. A la una yo nací, a las dos me engrandecí. A las tres to mi amante, a las cuatro me casi. A las tres to mi amante, a las cuatro me casi. Now we're going to do alma, vida y corazón three times, but this time we're going to really do it six. Because I'm going to do one and then you're going to repeat it. Alma, vida y corazón. Alma, vida y corazón. We went down. Now we're going to stay in the middle. Alma vida y corazón, alma vida y corazón. Now we're going to go up. Alma vida y corazón, alma vida y corazón. You guys are singing in Ladino. That's amazing. Okay, I'm going to go right through to the next verse. Dime niña, donde vienes? Que te quiero conocer. Repeat. Dime niña, donde vienes? Que te quiero conocer. Si tú no tienes amante, yo te haré defender. Si tú no tienes amante, yo te haré defender. Ama vida y corazón. Alma, vida y corazón. Now up. Alma, vida y corazón. Viéndome para la guerra, los besos al aire y di. Viéndome para la guerra, los besos al aire y di. El uno es para mi madre y el otro para ti. El uno es para mi madre y el otro para ti. Alma, vida y corazón. Alma, vida y corazón. Alma, vida y corazón. Your corazón. Amazing job, everybody. 
everybody. Great. Now let's flip the page. Shabbat. Now I know that we are not actually making these for Shabbat, but this song is actually written by a wonderful, wonderful dear friend of mine. May her memory be for a blessing, Judy Frankel. Um, lyrics by Rita Gabay Simontov. And it's really just a song about passing traditions on from one generation to the next, which is what we're doing. I'm so happy to be here with my mother and my daughter. And uh, that's really what making these bizcochos are all about. So I'm going to sing this and you're gonna catch on very quickly and just join in when you feel like you have it. Here we go. Me a todro de mi nona cada viernes por la tarde. Now the next lines are going to repeat that same melody. Como le hablaba siempre a su nuera mi madre. Now here's the chorus. Ay de fija regalada quitate el devantal metete vestido limpio que ya llega el Shabbat. That's the whole song. And then it just repeats. La comida ya está pronta y la mesa se metió. Las candelas ascendidas tu familia ya es. Ay de fija regalada, quítate el devantal, métete vestido limpio, que ya llega el chapat, que ya llega. El Shabbat. One more time. Que ya llega el Shabbat. Oh, I just got emotional. My mother and my daughter are here. Okay, I'm going to screen share one more time. Oh, I see some people raising hands. Mira, I'll let you check those out. I want to just show you one more thing. How are we doing? We still have nine minutes, so great. There's one more song I want to do that's really, really special. Okay. So I showed you before my cousin Rochelle, who is turning 103, and she was born in Monastir, um, and she is a remarkable person for so many reasons, not least of which is that she was one of very few survivors during World War II. Um, many of you might know the history of what happened in Salonika during World War II, but Monastir was sort of like its sister city and had the same awful, terrible fate. Um, 98% of the Jews from Monastir did not survive World War II. They were all taken to Treblinka where they were murdered. And Rochelle survived because she was hidden in the trunk of a car and taken over to Albania where she assumed a new identity and lived with a Muslim family and waited out the war there. She is a miracle for so many reasons and um, I just am so lucky to have her in my family and to have this history. And I want to just show you some very poignant pictures of Monastir. Uh, this picture was taken before World War II and Rochelle is the second from the left. She's walking down the streets of Monastir with her friends and family. And um, 
presumably everyone in that picture perished except for Rochelle. And then uh, fast forward to just three months ago in March, right before COVID, I actually was in Monastir uh, when COVID broke out. And I walked that same exact street where Rochelle was uh, with her friends and family. So you can see the two pictures juxtaposed. And I have dedicated most of my career to preserving the memory of Sephardic Jews and this beautiful tradition of Ladino music and our culture. And specifically, I've dedicated the last year to preserving the memory of Jewish monastir. And I'm doing that through the best way I know how, which is through music. And I am bringing together Israeli musicians and Macedonian musicians to record um, with the government's help um, we are recording an album of music that has never been recorded before. It's all music that is unique to the Jews who once lived in Monastir, of which there are none today. There is not one single Jew who lives in, in Monastir. And we are doing our best to preserve their history and their memory. And proceeds from this project are all going towards NGOs on the ground in Monastir, which is uh, the modern name is Bitola, um, the largest cemetery in the Balkans, outside of Israel, in the Balkans, is in Monastir, in Bitola. And I had the great fortune to lead a trip there two years ago now. And I had a lot of family members and extended family members. And this is actually at the cemetery. And um, proceeds, again, from this Monastir project that I am spearheading, um, are going to go towards preservation of this cemetery and other wonderful projects to preserve the history there. So I know that in the links for registration, um, there were links to donate if you'd like to. I hope that you'll be generous now that you've heard some of this story and um, bring this project to, to reality. We are in the middle of recording the project. And for those of you who are Israeli or who know Israeli musicians, um, tomorrow is one of the biggest days of the project. We are recording Yaram Gaon, the great Yaram Gaon from Israel is recording a song on the album. So it's, um, it's going to be something special and we hope to do great things for the memory of Monastir and for our cousin Rochelle who's turning 103. So thank you for listening and with that, I want to teach you, it's the song on the fourth page on the back, because we still have five minutes. So I want to teach you a song, uh, it's number four. Oh, there is information, by the way, if you want to learn more about the Monastir Project, it's right at the top of my website. And this song called Ed No Vreme Sibev Erken, for those of you who are Ladino speakers, you might have realized this is not in Ladino. It is actually in Macedonian, and it's going to be one of the songs on the record. And why is it on the record? Because this was written, it's a traditional song, and it talks about a Macedonian uh, person, a Slavonic, somebody from Yugoslav, uh, who was walking down the streets of the Jewish neighborhood in Monastir or in Bitola, as you see here, and fell in love with a Jewish girl. And so just historically, um, it's fascinating that Jews were the subjects of these traditional folk songs from the region. And it's a really fun song, and it's got a great rhythm, um, and it will be on the album, and I'm going to need some help singing it. If you're not a singer, just join along for the tra la 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 las But again, the lines repeat, and it's just a really fun, easy song to get on board with. So um, I'm going to need some help with some drumming, just clapping. Watch for me, guys. Good. Great. Keep it going. And no vreme si per ergen, em la bota cinema. We're gonna actually, we're gonna start over. Follow me while we start, and then you'll catch on the rhythm. Ready? And no vreme si per ergen, em la bota cinema, em la bota Okay, okay. <laughs> Let me just do this. That's what happens when we got a lot of people in the room. <laughs> okay, just follow me, everybody at home. En no vreme si beb ergen em rabota cinema. En no vreme si beb ergen em rabota cinema. Tra la 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 la
cinema. Tra la 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 la. Emra bota cinema. Great job, you guys are singing in Macedonian. Here we go. Kasi tug na na prosietka na prosietka vo bitola. Kasi tug na na prosietka na prosietka vo bitola. Tra la 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 la. Na prosietka vo bitola. Tra la 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 la. Na prosietka vo bitola. Na prosietka vo pitola ni ze vreski te mali. Na prosietka vo pitola ni ze vreski te mali. Trai la 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 la. Ni ze vreski te mali. Trai la 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 la. Ni ze vreski te mali. Kam u stretna mama evreka, to ko si raz tureni. Kam u stretna mama evreka, to ko si raz tureni. Trai la 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 la, to ko si raz tureni. Trai la 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 la, to ko si raz tureni. Bring it on, here we go. I je rekao ko Slavjanski da se stori Slavjanka. I je rekao ko Slavjanski da se stori Slavjanka. Traj la 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 da se stori Slavjanka. Traj la 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 da se stori Slavjanka. perfect than these, but that's okay. So you can see that some of, they're very hot, so you definitely want to let them cool a little bit. And some of the sesame falls off, and that's okay. They should be nice. I mean, right now they're a little bit too hot to eat and check, but they're perfect, crunchy, solidity. So I'd love to see some of yours. Did you all see mine? Okay, great. Anybody want to show off yours? Yeah, let us know by raising your hand or uh, mentioning in the chat and we'll come and spotlight you. I'm trying to look and see. People might, they might still be in the oven, a few folks. So. Oh, okay. Well, I want to teach you. Oh, wait, hold on. Amy, Amy Snyder is showing us hers. Oh, look at that. All right, they're gonna taste great. It doesn't matter what it looks like, it's gonna taste great. Oh, so somebody made the ropes. Somebody knows what they're doing. Wow, so somebody made the ropes and somebody made the scoring, great. You made all the different varieties. Some with sesame, some without, those look amazing. Let's see, Alex, those look really great. Um, those don't look like sesame seeds, that looked like something else. Figure eights over here, oh wow. Nice. Nice work, okay. Nice work. <laughs> and depending on your oven, if you wanna keep it in another minute or two, that's fine, that's fine too. Anybody else? Let's see, I think that might be, oh wait, there are a few other folks raising their hand, let's see. Oh, I don't Yeah, I think we already got them. You got them? Okay, great. Okay, well don't worry if they're still in the oven, we got one more thing to do. So um, for those of you who have seen your bizcochos or tadlikus, we're gonna let them sit for one more minute, but what you say at the end of cooking to appreciate the chef, and this is for all of you, I wanna appreciate you guys, you say benditas manos, literally in Ladino, blessed hands. So you all have benditas manos, you are all beautiful, beautiful, blessed hands and chefs. 
So um, while we're waiting for a few of you to finish your cookies, um, we're gonna finish up with one more song, but I do wanna ask um, if there are other Sephardic foods that you wanna see made. Um, there are amazing cookbooks and teachers out there doing this work. Um, some of them are actually on <laughs> on the Zoom right now. Um, so thank you for all of your work celebrating this food of our culture. Um, I'm happy to consider the other dishes um, and match them with songs if you're interested. So if there are dishes that you are particularly interested in making, please feel free to put that in the chat. I pretty much have songs to go with any occasion <laughs> and food. So um, I'm happy to offer, offer that. Speaking of which, if you enjoyed this class, and are not already on my mailing list, please go to my website, sarahourwesley.com, which I will put right here. And um, you can check out the different classes that I will be offering uh, in the fall because I have been offering song leading classes and I will be offering some other selections this fall. So if you wanna keep updated, please join my mailing list. Um, I also have all of my music for free on my website. Um, you can listen to anything on my website and I also have some other really fun swag. Um, I've got five different CDs and the Monastery Project will be the sixth, but you can listen to all of this on the website. And if you have little ones at home, I do have a couple of books and um, this is my most recent, Buen Shabbat, Shabbat Shalom. And you can also, this nice flower encrusted t-shirt, oh no, a nice clean t-shirt could be yours, Latino Rocks on my website as well. Um, lastly, uh, a final plug for the Monastir Project. If you missed it before, this culture is so important to keep alive. And um, I'm doing so by teaching classes like this and by having people surrounding me who love this culture too and i'm just so so honored that i got to share this part of my culture with you um if you feel moved by these stories i do hope you'll consider donating to the monastery project and i think that is it from my end before we close out with a song but i want to make sure everyone gets to taste their biscochos before we close out and if anybody has any final questions, Mira, anybody else? Yeah, I just wanted to say a huge thank you to Sarah for joining us today. Um, we we're so excited to have this. This has been one of our biggest tradition kitchens classes yet. Um, so make sure you stay up to date with tradition kitchens. We have amazing classes coming up ahead. Um, so follow us on Instagram, Facebook, uh, sign up for our newsletter. And I'll send all that in a follow-up email tomorrow. But thank you so much for joining us. And thank you, Sarah. My pleasure. It has really been a pleasure. And I do want to end with one last song, which is uh, an oldie but goodie. I think everybody, or a lot of you, will know it. Um, I am going to put just the Monastir link in the chat if you missed it the first time. It is right there. Um, and here we go, the last song, and then we're gonna take a bite. Oh, I see some people already taking bites. Mm -hmm. My daughter, Irit, do you wanna, do you wanna show everybody your cookie? No, okay. <laughs> She's feeling shy, it's bedtime. Okay, um, so I know some people have a few, few more minutes, but uh, for those of you whose cookies did come out, they should be, they should be edible by now. <laughs> they shouldn't be too hot. I see everybody there eating. Yeah, you had those. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Wow. Well, I'm gonna taste this one. You see that, everybody? How does that look? Does that look crunchy and yummy? Delicious. It's a good looking. Uh, it's a good looking biscuit. Uh, yeah. Amazing. Mmm, and it tastes so good. Okay. So, let's go to the third song to close it out. Avram Avinu, it's also known as Quando el Rey Nimrod. And the chorus is one of the most famous Ladino melodies. It is sort of like our Hava Nagila, and it is sung at every joyous occasion, every Simcha, 
every family gathering. And so what better opportunity than to sing it here. So we're gonna close out with this, Avram Avinu. And if you know it, sing loud and proud. Here we go. Cuando renim rab, agam vasalia, miraba en el cielo y en la sfieria, vida una luz santa en la judería, que había de nacer, Abraham Avinu. Abraham Avinu, Padre querido, Padre bendito, luz de Israel. Abraham Avinu, Padre querido, Padre bendito, luz de Israel. La mujer de tierra quedó preñada, día en día ella preguntaba, ¿De qué tienes la cara tan enyudada? Ella ya sabía el bien que tenía. Abraham Avinu, Padre querido, Padre bendito, Abraham Avinu, Padre querido, Padre bendito, Luz de Israel. Okay, last one, here we go. Saludemos al compadre y también al mujer, que por sus dejos nos venga el goel. Y rima a todo Israel, cierto lo haremos al verdadero. Abraham Avinu, Padre querido, Padre bendito, luz de Israel. Abraham Avinu, Padre querido, Padre bendito, luz de Israel. One more time. Abraham Avinu, Padre querido, Padre bendito, luz de Israel. Abraham Avinu, Padre querido, Padre bendito. Israel. Woo! manos to everybody. I hope that you enjoyed this evening. I hope that you enjoy your bizcochos and your tarlicos. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for being a part of this tradition for this evening. And I hope that you'll go out and continue to bake these. Thank you to Tradition Kitchens, especially to Mira for inviting me. And please be in touch and ask me any questions. You have my website and you can feel free to email me anytime. Enjoy. Thanks everybody. Thank you, Sarah, so much. And there's been a fun little uh, reunion in the chat thread. Um, so we're gonna have to send you some of this. Uh, some, some people are from near where your family was. So really exciting. Wonderful. Thank you everybody. You'll get a link to all of the videos tomorrow to watch it and learn again. We're gonna check out as we go, Stacy. Look at those beautiful, beautiful, wow, they're amazing. If anybody else wants to show off, please uh, let us know by raising your hand and make sure you tag us in all of your great pictures so we can celebrate your cooking. And we're gonna hang up in a minute. Everyone stay safe and healthy and we'll see you on Zoom soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.